Hello Targar friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was dynamic effort squat and deadlift day. Now I'll get into what I'm doing here in a minute. Uh, I wanted to address a couple of points here. Uh, some people were saying, hey, you're not even really doing anything remotely like Westside. You're a minimalist and, and they do fluff and pump and you don't do any of that. And then someone else had said, uh, Jason, why are you doing so much training with your shirt off? I thought you were against bodybuilding. And I think people need to understand that the no shirt thing is actually for practical reasons, mostly. And I think that we need to remember that training without a shirt is not the same thing as sucking dick for drugs. They're two totally different things. Most bodybuilders are prostitutes. Okay, that, that's how they fund their lifestyle. It's been my experience being around that world. So it, you, you can't compare taking your shirt off to do some deadlifts so that you don't get sweaty um, with g for p and and the whole bodybuilding lifestyle I, I don't really see the association uh one of the reasons i'm training without a shirt is that i don't really care if some people don't like my loose skin or whatever uh, from the 100 pounds of fat loss or they don't like my physique it doesn't really matter i train shirtless when the camera's not on if i do anything at home i, I don't wear a shirt around my house and even doing these squats with a shirt um this shirt gets so sweaty that it's drenched in sweat. So if I can go entire workouts in the Houston humidity and heat here, because even with fans blowing on me, um, this shirt by this fifth or sixth set of squats was actually soaked and then it gets my belt wet and, and everything else. It just creates more laundry for me. So the less stuff I can wear when training, particularly in the humidity here, the less laundry I have to do. And you know, it probably gets better views on top of it on YouTube. So it, it's really a practical thing for me. Um, it's just less laundry, the less stuff I get on, the less sweaty I get, the less chance of my place stinking up with sweaty clothes and I have to do laundry more often. And since I'm the only one training here, I can just wipe my bench down when I'm done. You know, with a little bit of disinfectant and a cloth, wipe it down one time at the end of a workout and, you know, I'm done. Makes my life easier. So, I mean, that's kind of what it's about. It's, it's not a big deal. It's not like I'm rubbing oil all over my body and flexing on the camera. <laughs> It's just, a, it's a practical thing, guys. I live in a high heat place. Just like when I was training in the UK, you guys saw me wear leggings and layered clothing and stuff because I was training in the cold, right? I was training in sub-freezing temperatures sometimes. And you dress accordingly. It is hot as hell in Houston and it's ultra high humidity. Like you sweat here, right? You get swamp ass. So it, it's pretty much for practical reasons. It brings my level of sweating down and my laundry level way down and I just prefer to do it. Like if the camera wasn't on and I was just doing small stuff, I wouldn't even have the shorts on. So back to the point here. The other thing that was brought up was uh, you're not really doing West Side. You don't do fluff and pump. Uh, I do curls. I do laterals. I do jam presses, face pulls, ab work, hyper extensions, glute ham raises. No, I do a, a lot of accessory stuff. A lot of it. So people are looking at what I did for base building before of training minimalism, which I say novices should be doing. And they're assuming that's what I'm still doing. And anyone who's watching my training videos knows that's not the case. And then I've told you guys there are at least three or four small exercises that I do all the time that I'm not even doing on camera. So there's more stuff that I'm not doing, even, even what you guys see here. So keep that in mind and I said I'm going to continue to add more accessory work over time because we are having to get as thick as possible and what people need to remember when it comes to these smaller exercises not that I'm against them it's that novice lifters waste their time with them if you only squat 300 pounds and you only bench 200 pounds you have no business doing a damn curl or a tricep extension you haven't earned the right to do fluff and pump you don't need it uh, you're wasting your time with it and I'm just going to call it like it is. You're, you're completely wasting your time. Smaller exercises are for people who are approaching their maximum recoverable volume on big lifts and they have certain body parts that they need to bring up that can use a little bit more extra work that can't handle more sets of big movements, right? Because you are reaching your limits. Novice lifters do not get bigger arms by doing direct arm work. Every study that's ever looked at it has found that. All right, that's just reality. And that's why I deter that. Most people out there are novice lifters. Therefore, if you put them on a routine with 10 sets of tricep extensions and 10 sets of curls every week, they're not going to do the important stuff and they're going to stay tiny and weak, useless pieces of shit for the rest of their life. 
when you're a serious athlete and you're approaching maximum recoverable volume on squats and deadlifts and bench pressing and all that stuff every week, and then you need smaller exercises to thicken up weak points, that's a different ball game, totally different beast. Now, over to what I am doing right now, box squats with bands. Uh, second week of this wave, right? These are going in three week waves, slight weight increase, and then we'll do that again next week, and then we'll go into chains. And so pretty much I will repeat the pattern. It will be the same weight on the bar for the chain waves, but it'll be chains instead of bands. Now the difference will be the chains will have probably about 10 more pounds at the top than my bands do, but they won't have the stretch. So it's not like you have to accelerate as fast to overcome the inertia of the bands, but it will still have that, that accommodating resistance and it will be heavier at the top. Uh, it's just a different form of accommodation. It's a different form of strength curve between the two. And so by doing them in three week waves, we don't stall because we're never repeating the exact same wave uh, two weeks in a row. Because what I did on these, you know, I started at 60% or so, and then I'm adding 20 pounds every week. So we're doing the 12 doubles on the box squat with a certain weight with against the bands. And then I'm adding 20 pounds on the second week and then another 20 pounds on the third week and then we reset the pattern with chains so we go back to the same weights again but with a 65 pound chain set so that's pretty much the way i'm going to do it so it's going to be progressive overload through the three week wave and then we rotate the accommodation same thing on the sumo deadlifts now i am going to say man today these first four sets i did them really quick with short breaks and it almost killed my thumbs Especially the second set, I had to rechalk my thumbs really good because I didn't let the, the liquid grip dry. And I was struggling gripping it on the second rep on the second set, like I almost had to turn it loose. Then after that, I held on fine because I just chalked up really good. But doing doubles against the bands with the hook grip, uh, you guys will notice on the last two sets, it looked like I, I thought my thumbs were going to fall off. But you talk about some fantastic grip work. It's just something about that hook grip pulling against those bands at the top because the bands try to jerk it back out of your hand. It's just like if you don't get that hook set in tight when you jerk it out of the bottom because you're pulling for speed, right? We are doing these with compensatory acceleration. And even though there's only, what do I have on there? 395 on the bar? And I'll go up over 400 next week. 395 on the bar, but then the bands. You have to remember those bands are putting tension at the top. And I'm not even sure how much, but it's noticeable. Like you feel the bands try to jerk you back down at the top and it just pulls against that hook. And fantastic grip training. Because I get 16 total reps against that hook grip, which is more reps than I normally do with it. Um, so I feel like that's really gonna take uh, my grip training up another notch. So I'm really happy with that. It's just that by the end of it, I'm just dying. I'm taking like long breaks these last couple sets. I'm not gonna lie. Like these were like four minute breaks. And normally I try to do 90 seconds on speed work. I just couldn't, like my thumbs, I had to wait for my thumbs to feel, they felt like they were gonna swell up. <laughs> and I just had to wait for the thumbs to stop hurting. And as soon as my thumbs didn't hurt anymore, and I would chalk between and then let the, I would let my thumbs kind of calm down while the chalk was drying, the liquid grip, and I'd put it in a fan. And then when it would stop hurting, I'd come over and pull again. Uh, but like the last couple sets were something like four minutes before I could do each one. And you guys will notice when I get to those, I'm like just like open and closing my hands at the end. And on the, on the last set, the eighth set, uh, I had to regrip it between the two reps because it's that second rep. The first rep's not bad. It's that second rep. It's that second rep that gets me. But, I mean, you get better at the hook grip by practicing it, and your thumbs just have to toughen up, you know. And I've been doing a little bit of extra grip work outside of my normal training. Not a lot because I'm not worried about my deadlifts maximizing it right now. I need to do just enough grip work to keep it going. But I will start prioritizing grip work more and more as I thicken up and get stronger on this system of training again over time, because I will need to make sure my grip doesn't limit me. Um, but the hook grip is getting a hell of a lot of work, and I'm glad I've been able to complete all the speed work so far in this phase without going to any mixed grip and doing just straight hook, uh, because I, I really need the extra hook practice, because I'm doing it on both days now for the heavy work, which is a much, much lower volume, and then the, uh, all the speed work. But yeah, the 16 speed reps with the hook grip, plus the warm-ups, which I don't even film, I don't have time. Like these are running 15 minutes without even doing any of my warm-ups on camera. And I do actually warm up. 
contrary to popular belief. Um, and that's going to get more so as I add more accessories in because I'm going to start rotating belt squats in. Um, I've tested my setup and I almost have it perfected being able to do belt squats without a thousand pound belt squat machine. Like it, it actually isn't as hard as you guys think since I had enough stuff here like I've got that uh, peg and everything over there that I can put plates on. I've got belts. Like it's just a matter of adjusting things and standing on blocks because I actually have two of those. You see those that 12 inch box that I'm box squatting on? I actually have a pair of those and I've tested it and they can stay but they stabilize really well me standing on each one so it's a matter of squatting down and hooking my chain into the top of that peg and then squatting it up off the floor to do belt squats and, and it actually works so it's something I'm just going to do a little practice with off camera and then I'll rotate that in as an accessory too and I'll discuss why I'm doing all that also um, five sets of ten on pin lay rows these were hard these are hard, and there you guys can see there's my loose skin. You can see it. It hangs down when I do these. Deal with it. You don't like it, that's too bad. But uh, that'll tighten up as I get leaner over time, too. And people need to remember, I will get leaner. I'm not done losing body fat. It's just I'm not worried about weight loss on the scale during this phase. I'm just maintaining, getting as strong as possible, um, not gaining body fat, not gaining body weight, which will slowly lean me out, and then I'll worry about another cutting phase later. So... Pinlay rows are hard after doing the deadlifts because my upper back is really fatigued from that those sumo band pulls. Um, like I really feel that in my thoracic region a lot. Like I notice it feeling beat up, which is you know my weak area right now for squats. So it needs that work. Uh, I really feel that it's hard doing these pinlay rows afterwards. But I'm getting good grip training from it. Uh, putting meat on my back, meat on my arms. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing hammer curls is that they will help me with my weak link on pin lay rows. And if the pin lay rows improve, what does that carry over to? Better stability on the bench. It improves my deadlift. It improves my grip because it's part of my grip training is to do high volume rowing. So if I get stronger on these by bringing up the weak link, meaning my arms, which the hammer curls will help with all the muscles involved in that, then it will improve multiple performance elements. And that, that's one of the things that people need to remember on this sort of system of training. A lot of what we're doing is saying, okay, what accessory movements do I need to either get stronger or thicken up my weak areas on my big lifts? And then we look at that and say, okay, that's fine. So those are coming along. That'll help my other lifts. Uh, what can I do then to make those lifts improve? And something like hammer curls address the weak link in my rows. And if I address the weak link in my rows by thickening up my biceps, brachialis, brachial radialis, all of that stuff, and it allows me to row more weight for sets of 10, then my grip improves, then my mid traps improve, my lats improve, because I'm stronger. And particularly the grip, I mean, because the, the grip is going to be a limiting factor in there. So again, if you get stronger at your accessory movements, uh, it improves everything. So everything is a trickle down effect. And, and again, with a system of training like this, that's a lot of what you do. You pick accessory movements based upon where do I need to get thicker to get good at everything I'm trying to do. You know, and that, that is the way even guys like Louis Simmons address it, you know, of, of saying, okay, so a close grip bench press will make my bench press go up. It seems to be able to improve it from this point. How do I make my close grip go up? Um, and everything is done through that system. It's a trickle down effect. So you really look at that and say, technically, Hammer curls, yes, they help with the bench press. But the, ha the hammer curls might help my deadlift because of that trickle-down effect. Because if they improve my rows, my rows will improve my deadlifts. And it's a, it's a kind of a back-engineering way of looking at, at training. Um, but it does work. And it's not for the novice lifter. Like most of you guys out there, look, if you're still trying to get to a 315 squat for reps, you don't need to worry about this stuff. Right? You're, you're only benching 200 pounds for two or three reps. You, you do not need to worry about this stuff. This is for advanced lifters who have the time, energy, and recovery to do it. So I finished up with good mornings. I only did three sets today. It's like my hamstrings and my thoracic records and everything were just done. They're just like, we're done. This is enough of this crap. And I'm going to do glute ham raises later anyways once I've recovered a bit. So my hamstrings will get a little more work. And so, yeah, I mean, it was like by this third set, everything was just like, yeah, we're done. We're done. We've been beat up enough. Um, but, I mean, it was a fair amount of volume, good workout. Got all my, my second wave done on all the dynamic work. Uh, hit all my target numbers for the five sets of ten on the road. And this did some, some good mornings. And I feel like almost my neck 
really gets a lot of work on here. My neck is becoming a limiting factor almost on these. And so part of me is almost going, it's going to sound, people are going to get pissed. I, might, I don't know, I might do some neck training just to get better at good mornings. <laughs> then people will start calling me strap on destiny. Serious, not serious. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.